Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our podcast. I am Mark. This is Sterling. Today we are going to talk about Utopia US Episode 6. We're going to review it. We're going to do a little compare and contrast. If it's not already obvious from watching the previous podcast, the entire episode is completely full of spoilers. So if you want to watch the episode first, please go ahead and do that now. Come back once you're all done. If you just want to watch the podcast, watch the podcast and enjoy. Like we mentioned last episode, because the UK version was six episodes and the US version is eight episodes, now we are watching episode six of the US version. Next, we will be watching the final two episodes of both shows together. Sterling? Yeah, and we jump right in with Arby. So we, I think this episode is a little bit more of kind of teaser, not necessarily a a ton going on, but it does have some important reveals. Some of them are things that we have seen in the UK version. I think that, I think we are at a place where they are finally right about there. They may, they may not be perfect, but they are, are pretty close. We see Arby in a situation where it, it, it really finally gives us this whole kind of idea of how stunted he is as he's, you know, kind of being childish, pulling off raisin boxes, stomping on them. It pulls out. You see that, you know, he's in a room where he's watching a cartoon. And as it kind of continues to zoom out, you can see like his geode collection, you know, so it's definitely setting up the scene of, you know, what what is this person like? which may help us to understand some of the actions that he's taken up to this point. Yeah, and also on that room, he actually, you know, you're saying it's kind of like stunted. You see him kind of like acting like, you know, he's got kid things. He's got an old television. Like it's like an old one. It's not a flat screen, you know, not an HDTV that you can get anywhere. It's an old one. And the room he's in is kind of, looks like a prison. There's no windows. It's got like a big light bar that is just, you know, in there. And we... Small space. This is like a, <clears throat> everything that he needs is in this tiny space. You know, it's it's got his small bed and his little entertainment area and his area to hang his clothes. I wouldn't be surprised if they take care of laundry for the people that are here. I would, ass- I would assume they do. And then we looked at the comic again that he had in the room he has the the very specific part i don't know if you saw it this time where there was the poor little water yeah the waterboarding there was the gun in this one i think i saw in the top left corner it said don't hurt me and then it had the gun that was goes off and it goes bang he has this millipede like tail coming out of his back they've created a monster the monster which is Arby. And we later see Arby go confront Christy, uh, John Cusack's character, which funny, he throws the, the geode at the window, and I don't know if you saw the, the crack on the window. It didn't look like um, a, a rock hit it. It was very much like it was a design. It, it, was, it was going for it, you know. Unless we're, unless we're supposed to believe that this is you know, strength and glass because, you know, he knows that he might have some enemies. It it definitely didn't look like geos are pretty heavy. That yeah. And just the way that it would crack, I feel like it would look very like dense in the middle and then splintered out where it was just kind of a spider web. There was a center, but it was a little spider webby. Not to get too nit no. nitpicky on that, but we should we should we should compare <laughs> side by side comparison. We'll see if this happens. If that this happens You'll see a visual, but a side-by-side comparison of this, and then do you remember the Tesla Cybertruck presentation where they were showing how the windows were shatterproof? Yes, and then it shatters <laughs> by Elon Musk throwing it. You know, like he's got a little probably weak bird arms and throwing it, and it just uh, shatters. It, it'd be interesting because that was that was like a that was like a, a heavy, you know heavy ball and it'd be interesting to kind of see side by side of like you know real something that was thrown at something that was supposed to be you know unbreakable glass right i feel like you know 
even if you threw like a softball at that, I you might break a window. But like you're saying, it could be bulletproof. Christy might have enemies. We did see the interaction, which very different from the UK version of the character Thomas with Arby, which was very interesting. We kind of had the similar, you know, scene from when Arby was confronting those two gentlemen at the UK in the UK version who were afraid of him. And in this version, I don't think that John Cusack's character or Thomas were afraid of him. I think they were very much, I mean, a little afraid. They were, you could, you could see a little afraid. The closest we got to that was when Arby asked a very uncomfortable question and, and Dr. Kevin Christie said, remember that I've always been straight with you. Keep that. I've always told you the truth. Yes. Yes. That was, that was the only moment that it seemed like he was, while being truthful, was also being careful with his words. But yes, I agree that, you know, in fact, Thomas Christie was slapping him. Yeah, just slapping him like, and then bam, the bam, to bash his head in. And you would you would think that if they had grown Arby to be this killing machine, they even say like we did we withheld love from you so that you you didn't need it, and we needed you to be who you were, and love was not in the question. And so it's like they kind of made this really terrible person, you know, just by the way they treated Arby and just beating him up like that. Like, I would be afraid. Like, we've seen Arby do some crazy stuff. Like, and Thomas Christie, I think it comes from a little bit of entitlement, just starts slapping him. Bam, bam, bam. And takes the rock. But then the best thing happens. Where Kevin Christie tells Thomas, go to your room. Like, he just shuts him down. Go to your room. Your child, like, Thomas Christie. I, I, I know that, that Thomas is his kid, but Thomas is also an adult. There's, I, this interesting dynamic has, has opened up between the two of them, where you see that uh, Kevin has put Thomas in charge of very important things. And, and Kevin isn't directly overseeing those you know so decisions are being made by thomas on thomas's own some of those decisions are decisions that that kevin doesn't agree with so he's giving him a lot of leash but then you also see you know when he was talking with uh kara that he said you know i do, something like i don't know if he'll ever be ready right um you know so it's like you can tell that while he's giving his son all of this room to do this at the same time he also is comfortable crossing that line of like this is my son and i am going to rein him in at appropriate times well and i think what what shows that best is that uh kevin christie he is like how old would you say thomas is terrible with ages okay we'll just say he's probably over 20 you know we probably say 27 to 35 area maybe he's uh, I don't, 35 i'll go with i'll go with um mid to high 20s yeah mid to high 20s so we have this character who clearly makes a lot of money being in this you know corp corporation answering emails talking about like I work for you, but he still lives at home. He still lives under the roof of Kevin Christie. And is, I think that that, you know, the fact that he could just send him to his room and he just went was a very big example of how much of a hold that he has on him. Right. And it's it's kind of uh, the hold that I think the Harvest has on everybody that's in it. Because Thomas made a comment about, um, you know, some people think that you wouldn't let me do something like this. You know, when, when he was talking about, I think, about one of the twins. Right. You know, letting herself get offed. It seems like everybody, for the most part, obviously we saw, you know, Kara in the end ended up not buying into it but it seems like everybody in in for the most part is on board with this whole 
you know, whatever it takes. And if I have to sacrifice that myself, it, it's a great thing. You know, it almost is like I'm fulfilling my purpose. You know, I'm full. Yeah, and that's they, it, it. It seems like they can almost get excited about that. You know that because then they really are doing something huge for the harvest. Now I want to get back to talking about Lily and Charlotte and their dad who I can't remember his name even though they said it a bunch in this episode Dale Dale that's right um, but one thing I want to comment real quickly about Arby I feel like we just see this weaker version of Arby than the UK version in you know he's asking about his name we find out just like the UK version Arby is Raisin Boy he starts talking about Raisin Boy and you know, he's like, what was my name? And Kevin Christie's like, I don't even remember it. Or I don't even know if you had one. Like, and you see, the, you know, comparing the time when Arby cried in the UK version versus when he cried in the US version, because he started, he breaks down and he cries. And he just, and it's, you know. I mean, it's like a, a single tear, right? Well, it's a little bit more. It's, it's still... The sing so definitely single tear in the UK version. He wipes it away. You don't even see it. Yeah. In this one, it does look like he is crying, but like he's more put together. Like you do see, I think a couple tears, um, but he is kind of like, okay, like I I know where Jessica Hyde is. I know where Utopia is. Um, they're together. You know, good luck. Yeah, you know. Uh, interestingly enough, I. Actually, I liked the the RB scene where they explained, you know, that his name was Raisin Boy, or it it, it was this cruel joke, um, and I think that really came down to uh, the 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 actor. Like, I felt like I felt like Doctor Kevin's role, you know, the the way that um, the way that he kind of delivered those lines in this really kind of soft, but at the same time, very direct very straightforward you know even being painfully honest about the fact that you know this was kind of a cruel joke your name and i honestly don't really remember what your name really was or even if you had one it's and then he even comes back around to uh basically telling him you know hey you've got a got to get it not quite this way because i don't remember what the wording is but it's basically like you got to get your shit back together if you want to be able to fulfill your purpose so it's basically like after telling him this terrible stuff about himself and what they did to him you know they he said that we withheld love from you um you know and rb asks well you know what about jessica hyde she got it and he's like well it was mixed with her and how did that turn out you know with her she's Look at her life now. Doesn't have yeah exactly yeah how is how is she doing you know and he it's interesting that he turned a negative of we were always shitting on you into saying you had an enviable consistency. Right, right. Where you you had your needs per like even though you're in this bunker of a room, you had your needs provided. He even tells Thomas he's like give him his rock back like he was about to take his rock from him well he was about to hit him with it and then he was about to take it from him and then he says give him his rock back and you know he drops it on the floor which also dropped it on a rug made a very loud wood sound not a rug sound but that's fine it can't be perfect i'm nitpicking again don't listen to me on that but it's like it, it's saying like you know he had a stable life he had his needs met and he is fulfilling his purpose like what did you do in this world which it's interesting that they all have this train of thought of like what what did you do to make your place in this world oh wait never mind never mind on that i was gonna say i feel like they haven't brought it up to arby but in the i believe third or second episode they do bring it up to arby and he says one in the one in the basement or seven in the hotel yada 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 and one eyeball yeah it, like so they they did say how do you make a place in your world so that doesn't mean anything um but like i was saying 
Jessica Hyde not making her place in the world. Arby, who has had a rough life, but he is doing his part. And speaking of parts to play, let's talk about Lily and Dale and Charlotte. We see them in the CDC. You know, everything's being torn down now. Um, we're, we're taking everything apart. Uh, I was a little confused with Dr. Uh, I forget his name. Dr. Cerns. Dr. Cerns. He, uh, yeah. yep, he was, uh, kind of looking around, uh, this, you know, area and he seemed adamant to just follow these two, you know, where, where did they go? I'm looking for them. And, you know, they go in the car and Charlotte and Dale or Lily, Charlotte is the one that died. Lily and Dale are, well, Lily is trying to take a hold of the press um you can kind of see that she is i feel like she's reveling in it a little bit like she is happy that she's totally reveling in it we're gonna get to another scene where she does herself up and it's the most inappropriate time to make yourself look perfect she's hamming it up this is like she she figured out that like this is my moment this is my moment and her dad or not really dad i don't remember what they are the uh, charge or whatever. caregiver you know, something like yeah that. something like that what you know they were assigned to each other mm-hmm. um he keeps making it clear that you're supposed to be the face not the voice we don't want people getting too interested in you and we don't want people asking questions right and so we see them drive home they get to this house the reporters all the news agencies very interested um you know dr stern's very much on track which they also started naming this flu the dr stern's flu the stern's flu which kind of a bummer like the guy that cures it they're like oh this is the stern's flu like it's kind of like naming it after him which is a little messed up but he ends up at their house he's with them you know and (laughs) That's another part. It's like, do they, I, he's watching them, you know, when, when they're at the, like the CDC tents and, you know, she's talking more than she should. And then, you know, uh, Dale is like, I got to get you in this car. We, we got to get out of here. You got to stop talking. And so they get in the car, they go, when they get to the house, media is already at the house and Dr. Mike Stearns pulls up and it's like, how did he know where they lived? Because it's very clear that Dale didn't want to have him over. I think that he... So I don't he... think Dale gave him the address? I don't, did he follow the media? I... I think that's what he did. I think that's what I would assume it seemed like to me is that like there was that huge um, procession of cars, just tons of them. And so I think maybe he was like, okay, you know, I see that they're leaving. You know, he was looking for them. I'm going to follow these news vans. That's how he got there. And we see that Lily is very excited that Dr. Stearns is there. And and we do kind of have an interesting moment when, um, you know, Dr. Stearns comes. They invite him into the house. He's sitting on the chair. And there was a little awkward moment with a cup where he didn't know... Where, where to put it he's just like uh, uh uh i'll just i'll just hold it which i when i first saw that scene i thought it was kind of a little weird i was like i thought it was like trying to be funny you know kind of like trying to make a joke and then i realized that it was kind of setting up that this house is empty um empty it has nothing that is tangible no Doctor, pictures no pictures no decorations um we see that dr Stearns goes to the bathroom and dries his hand and the tags are still on the towels it there's seemed... no soap he had to just use you know water and a towel yeah and this kind of sets dr Stearns on the path to thinking okay this is and you know one thing i i wrote down was that I feel like this is the most gullible doctor ever. And just kind of like, 
you know, I'll just go along with whatever things. And so it was kind of surprising to see him actually be like, oh, this is what this is. You know, like, oh, something is crazy, you know, and he starts looking through the cabinets and nothing's in the cabinets. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> it is. It, and, and that scene actually was a little bit weird to me because it, it was kind of like the um, the scene with the the bunt cake where it the timing of things were just a bit off. So he opened up at least two drawers and at least one cabinet and the fridge. Literally every single one of them were empty. I didn't see anything on the counter. There was there. there there wasn't one cup. There wasn't one. And he gets caught with, um, you know, closing the fridge door. And, you know, uh, Dale asks him what he's doing. And he's like, oh, I just want some water. <clears throat> it cuts to Dale standing next to him, turning away, going directly to the sink, and then just putting his hand in the sink as if he already has a cup in his hand and turning on the faucet and then giving him... <laughs> The cup. It's, he never opened. I mean, uh, it's not like there would have been something in the cabinet, you know. But it was. Um, However, though it, he did, he did have a cup because he had a drink previously, where he was trying to figure out where I, to put I, the I, drink. I can see him, like grab to the left of the sink to like grab a cup and put it under. It was it was like cut directly from he's standing next to Doctor Mike Stearns to he goes to the the sink and just starts filling something and it 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 was like direct cuts from one to the other we actually see him moving from one place to another and and we don't see him like reach it it, it doesn't seem like they have like high attention to detail yes when it yes. comes to some of these things like well, as we've already seen that with like the bun cake but Right, and so what I was saying about the the cup is that we know that there would be at least some cups in the house because he already had a cup that he was trying to awkwardly place somewhere. So we know that there might have been some cups there, but you're right. I did not see Dale have a cup. I He just walked over to the sink. He didn't open anything. There were no cups on the sink, and he just fills it up. Maybe he was filling his hands up. He's gonna <laughs> let him here. We don't have any cuffs right now. And that was a funny question he asks um Lily. He's like, When did you guys move in here? Oh, like That's right. nine or fifteen months ago. <laughs> it's like a, a very like weirdly oddly time like space of time to like It's like in eleven seven? Eleven eleven one and a half? I don't know. I I was I was dying. I can't remember. I don't even know like, what day it is. But yeah, of course. And then and then he's like, "Where is the bathroom?" And she says, "Oh, it's." She's like, "Oh, I don't even know where the bathroom is in this place. I just got here." No, right. I'm a girl. I don't go to the bathroom. I mean, that would have been a good, good recovery, you know. So then we see that since you know Doctor Stearns is kind of figuring this out we see uh, Dale basically trying to circum circumvent this of making this house look a little bit more lived in. Well, first he, he calls up um, he calls up Thomas Chrissy and is saying, look, I, I can't shake this guy. This isn't good. He's asking questions. I need help. Thomas Christie calls up Dr. Mike Stearns and um and says i need you here right away for dot 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 something so of course you know instantly dr mike stearns is like i don't know he's you know he's like a, a dog he's like squirrel you know like loses the focus of like what's this mystery and it's like oh this is important you know this is right dr Kevin christie i gotta he he I tells stop investigating this weird mystery and I've just got to jump on it. Yeah, he tells Lily he's like, "Oh, I want to be personally with you so cool. every step of the way of your recovery." She's like, "Yes." Doctor Christie calls, or and he's well, just like, "I gotta go," and then he cancels on him and he's like, oh, "Okay, that's oh, fine." Yeah, and then 
we see um, Dale jumping so on let, cushion. Go, yeah. Yeah. So this this very much reminded me of the stretching scene that you didn't like early, you know, in a previous episode, where it was a stylistic choice where if you take a certain action and you take out the context of that action, you know, so maybe you zoom in a particular level or a certain angle or something like that. So you basically remove some of the important information from the equation. It can just look weird. And it's it's kind of a style choice. It's an interesting style choice. Um, I still don't think that this show nails it. I've seen other shows do that same kind of thing where it makes things look anachronistic for a moment where you're like, what the hell's going on? Because what we see is a zoomed in shot of an adult male in, I think he's in, you know, nice clothes, like maybe like dress work mm -hmm. clothes. Um, At least see, shoes on, you know, like nice shoes on. An, a, an adult male, you know, in like nice clothes jumping, you know, like I, it, it, it seems like a person bouncing on a bed or, you know, because he's inside or so. So like, it's like that's weird, you know, and there's no context of of what he's jumping on. That's just kind of a weird shot. And then as it pans out, you see he's jumping on the sofa cushions and then you see him, you know, putting all the stuff that he bought out, you know, in order to make the house look lived in. And so then it kind of clicks. It's like, oh, this is a new sofa. He's trying to break it in and make it seem like they've been living here. They've actually used this sofa. But it's kind of a... They don't nail it. It is an interesting technique when it's done right. I get what they were trying to do, but it's one of those things where it, like, it, it throws you off for a moment. You're like, what, what is going on in this scene? Right. It takes you a moment to put together the dots, and then you're like, okay, that's what it is. And uh, they decided to get an interior decorator from Target. I don't know if you saw the Target bags where they were pulling out. He's pulling out all this stuff to make the house look lived in. We got decorations. Um, it's like a huge Target run. He got like all the, all the makeup that she would have had if she'd been living in this house for mm -hmm. a year. You know, like this is a, a big run. Um, Cushions, did, candles stuff for the fridge and even tried to make the house look lived in by uh purposely spilling some of the oj on the floor mm -hmm. so that there'd be one stain in the house i mean you know. yeah just just one we we spilled orange juice here on these brown floors but uh it'll it... that, seemed, that seemed a little bit weird to me because it's like if, if you're gonna go to that level like shouldn't you also be I don't know, maybe putting out some dust bunnies or something like... I would if, be scuffing it up. I really, really think that people are going to be that nitpicky. Like, the one thing that you do to kind of make it look lived in is to spill one spot of OJ on the floor. You know, and, it's like, oh, nailed it. And uh, we see then... So this is one thing that I was a little confused about. It seems like... So, you know, Dale was setting up this house to make it look lived in. We've had reporters outside their house since they've gotten back home and we see dale go out the back and as he goes out the back he walks th seems like through their neighborhood like they're at a cul-de-sac and he like walks like past them but he's going through why does it look like all the other houses around that area are being set up you know they're like there's like planter like guys bringing out trees and like none of these news people are like interested in what's going on about like them setting up these other houses like i don't it, are we supposed to just assume that this is just like a brand new housing track that is say, you know if it's one of those um neighborhoods that that just recently got built and so you know they give you uh, a discount if you purchase before they're completely done with construction and so, you know, people move in in different, like we've actually got one kind of behind us that it's, it's not going through this anymore, but there was a period of time where some of the houses have been moved into and then some of them are still like have some work going on or even the ones that are completely done, there's a bunch of people still moving in. And so you can see that, you know, like they've, um, the yards aren't finished 
you know, when people are bringing in like the shrubbery that they're going to be okay. So I'll, I'll allow I, it. I, I, I'll, well, so overrule. in my well, so in my mind, I was thinking like, yeah. is this the um, you know, is this basically just uh, the Christie Labs or whatever this shady harvest organization is that that's just them setting it up, you know? Is that them just setting up this little housing area? And so that's what I thought at first. And I, in my mind, I'm like, so these all these reporters that are just sitting out here, they're all just like, yeah, it's fine. But I guess, you know, the housing track, that's fine. And we see Dale walk. And here is an homage to the UK version. The guy that yeah. sent out the original uh, Utopia script to get it you know circulating after he sees arby he you know walks in front of the thing and blammo hit by a truck dale does the same thing not mailing anything he's just i you know he he, i feel like he realizes that lily is kind of out of control she's gonna kind of do her own thing and i mean he even said to christy the wrong daughter died yeah you you chose the wrong daughter the other yeah. one listened. Yeah, Charlotte was a good one. Well behaved. Lily is unpredictable, kind of doing her own thing. And I think he realized that, like, if this is going to continue down this road, the stories aren't going to be able to, like, he's not going to be able to hold the stories up as well. And walks out right into the road. Blam. Just like the scene from the UK one. This is like what we've said before. The US version is very good at doing little homages to the UK version. And I would say that this was one of them. And definitely. <clears throat> and, and I think that, you know, once again, this is another situation where the, the U S one has gone out of their way to explain why did he commit suicide? You know, because I, I, I think in the, the UK one, I was not 100% sure that he was working directly with the organization or if he's just kind of like wait who t- in the uk t- one in the the guy who walked out in front of the, the the vehicle well he also had such a small part he was just like he had the thing he mailed it out like we just kind of have it's clear that he like he had he had utopia or he, mm-hmm. he, he had some manuscripts um but it's not it's not super like it's not 100 percent clear who he is what his connection is with everything right you know, and so it, it leaves a lot of questions unanswered of like, why why would somebody do that? And in this one, they are making it very clear that there are, you know, he's in the organization. Um, for the most part, it seems like everybody is all in on the organizations, but there are a few outliers, Kara, him, who aren't okay with everything. <clears throat> he even said to uh, Dr. Mike Stearns, like, we did our part. We want to be done. Yeah, we we're, you know, we like, just it, want to put this of, behind us. He, but he, he spoke a little out of turn. If you listen to the words he chose, it it was clear that that was more about what the what harvest is asking them to do, like right. the sacrifice is asking them to make, versus you know we went through this herring ordeal of my daughter contracted this disease and then your you know thing saved her. Um, it's very clear that, like, he's saying, like, I I played my part, I want to be done. Right. Um, and, and so they, they've made it very clear what motives are. There's, you know, they they don't leave a lot of, of questions unanswered, which we'll get to something later where, for me, sometimes this causes... I, I was okay with that scene, but for me, sometimes this causes major issues of, like, Sometimes over explaining things leaves more questions than answers and jump right into it. Oh. Are, are, you, are, you, are you talking about how they explain like how to write this guy into the history books, essentially of like creating yes. this whole past? Yes. So j- yes. yeah, jump on into it. Okay, so we're going back to the the secret wing of um, you know the Christie building. So this is a, a huge organization. Like th- this is a huge legitimate company. You well, it's know, very that, like a startup um, company or like a tech company. Well, well, going going back to like the actual like the the legit side of the company of you know they 
they man uh, they manufacture viruses. They recently got into um, you know meats that are good for like meats made of plants that are good for the earth. Um, the company know, so is called Christie Bio, by the way. Christie Bio, big biotech company. Um, and we've already seen that there's like a secret wing that says something like under construction or something like that. And it's obviously a big secret because both the times that we've seen Thomas Christie go there, he like looks, you know, before he goes in because he doesn't want to be seen going in because obviously you, you, you don't want people to know that there's a secret organization on the other side of that. You know, he has to go in through like the dark room. He has to go in through once again, the red light room. I don't know why there's a red light room. Um, and then he goes into... So there are, there are two different rooms. I'm going to call the, the first room the idea room. Um, we've got desks, computers, and you know he's saying, hey, here's the situation that we need to handle. And we need ideas for how to... Like, people are going to want to know Dale's story. And so we've got to come up with that story so and we got to do it quick questions exactly we've got to do it quick um and they want this really figured out down to the point where they've got like bowls of adderall within hands reach of everybody so that you can just like get in the zone and just get thinking of ideas and, and he even makes a comment up. and he says if you need to have a have one of the Adderalls, and it just shows the bulls. Like, just eat the Adderalls to keep going. So they're, they're asking questions, spitballing ideas, and it's very clear that, like, this is the group that is going to come up with the the spin. Like, what is what is the area that, you know, like, what's the, the, the spin that they're going to take the story, and then they'll flesh everything out from there. Once they've got the spin... That spin goes to another room. We're going to be throwing up a, an image here uh, in a moment. It's one that I sent you earlier. And this room is ridiculous like this. is very clearly uh, a Google-type space. You know, we've got um, everybody's in silly, brightly colored shirts. We have, like, beanbag chairs. I have something to say about those shirts. Yes. That is important. Yes. Okay, so, I don't know if you noticed this, but the shirts, do you know what was on the shirts? I, I, there was an animal on at least some of them, not all of them. A bunch of them had animal faces on their shirt. When we see the any of the um, pictures of Utopia in the thing... All of those people are represented by animal heads. Animal, there's yeah. sheep, there's uh, bulls, there's all, mm -hmm. all different types of animals. All these people were wearing animal faces on their shirt. But there were a couple that didn't, but there were still a lot of them that had yeah. the animal faces on their shirt, making me think those are the people that are represented in parts of Utopia. Mm -hmm. Possibly, I, I don't know why this team would be, because, once again, we've got the beanbag chairs, we've got, like, the hanging chairs. This is very clearly a creative, like, fun space, like Google, you know, where they probably have, like, a nice kitchen, you know, it's it's definitely giving off that vibe. There is a, a wall that just has... Words. ...some absolute cheese on it. It's... it's ab um, so, once again, we're going to be posting this so you can see this. Uh, savage, woke, rise and grind, YOLO, disrupt, hustle, squad, good vibe only, Zen AF, go <laughs> ham or go home. Go which Thomas Christie says at one point. He actually says a bunch of these. Um, so it's obvious, like this is this is where they take the spin that was created. And this team is tasked with getting on all the socials and making this stuff trend so that this story gets into the zeitgeist. And if anybody does any searching, they're going to find so many of these connections, you know, of all of this trending stuff related back to the story that they're telling. So it'll be just a flood of social information telling what they, they want. This is my issue. 
I'm ready. Lay it on me. The more that they try to explain this stuff, so it's like when when sometimes in the UK version they do something and the question you ask is how did they do that for instance the school shooting they faked cct uh footage and and the question you ask is how they don't even bother trying to answer it it's just like clear that this it's a shady organization just they did it and let's move on the the pacing is is too tight for us to go into the details this one is like mm, people are going to be confused we've got to explain it the issue oh, is both of his parents are dead. Oh, that's good. I won't have to have him at the funeral. <laughs> won't have to cast actors at the funeral. This, so, what is what is the payroll for all of these people who aren't doing regular work in the company? Do all of them have to go through, like, do all of them have to look before they go into, like, the, the secret wing? So, or I, maybe they're not in a secret wing, but it's like... So, well, that's what I think. So I think they are in the secret wing, and I think this is what? all all part of harvest and that's why they have the animals they're like they're almost like the grunts of the of of harvest where they just do they not, do they not go in and out of the secret doors do they, they do they they never live there <laughs> it's just, the it's rooms just are like, connected to it and they and only they let arby like, out so they they have to like i don't know do they, do they have to like feed and clothe these people or do they like sneak in and out just the same way that Thomas Christie does? Like, how do they afford this giant staff? Because th that was only in, like two branches of this. There was like the idea group, and then there was like the social group. But to me, that implies that there are other groups just like this that have other tasks. There's like so many specialized groups of people that have specialized tasks that it just begs the question of how the how do you afford this how do you right. hide these people how do you if so let's just say that you're hiding the people by literally hiding them they live there they don't have to keep going in and out of the secret door that means that you have just obscene deliveries of like food and dry cleaning and stuff like that where a company that that whoever does your services would say how, how what are you doing with all of this because it's enormous compared to your opera. Like it just, it raises more questions than it answers. And it ends up looking so much sillier versus I'd rather just ask that question of like, how are you doing this? And be kind right. of like, Ooh, it's right. a mystery. Well, and I think it's cause they definitely, I, and I, to me, this seems like part of harvest. It's, you know, it's the shady part that people don't know. Like if you remember back in, I think the first episode when, the guy that was driving the car to pick up Arby calls, you know, the group of people and they're like, oh, we'll get you the records on these people that might know Utopia. Like, this is who I'm thinking they are. And I'm thinking, yep. you know, we saw that that school building of, of children and it makes me believe that they, you know, they grow these children into like being little hackers, being these things, you know, Maybe they shouldn't have, like, hit it, made it so, like, hidden, like, oh, we have this hidden room, you know, that is under construction that Thomas, you know, walks through when it's, you know, in the red room. They should have made it more like this is, like, a legitimate part of the Christie Corporation, and then I feel like you could get away with it a little bit more, but... I feel with them trying to be like, oh, it's this hidden operation. That's that's, that's where it loses it a little bit. Yes, if if they if they leaned into the 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 Google thing, and they had that be you know like Google has a whole wing, you know the their um was it their their moonshot wing, you know which is like the the crazy stuff that most likely will never come of anything. But the idea is, you know, they're trying to shoot for the moon. Even if they miss, they'll at least land among the stars or whatever. Google's harvest. And they, and they, and they, 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 they don't, you know, maybe there's secrecy around it because they don't want somebody else to beat them to this crazy technology that they're working on first. And so you just have this like X labs, you know, that is known for doing secret stuff and it, it's legitimate secret stuff that they're doing. It'd be so much better if they do that versus right. like 
having this hidden wing where it's like it's under construction and they have to look both ways before they go in and there's a huge company and literally nobody has ever seen anybody go in there like <laughs> <laughs> right right and and we know it's a huge operation because we know there's dale and charlotte and lily and like kara was a part of it and so we and like there was the driver guy originally and we know that he called people and we know that they set up that whole you know there were the other students so i feel like it's just them kind of explaining harvest in a in a tech company way which it, it makes it a little silly but i think that's also why they had the animal shirts is because i think that that was representing like you know in the comic you see you know they're carrying the barrels or there's other than jessica hyde's dad who has a face everyone has an animal head that's represented as people we see in the cartoon later on um we will we'll, we'll go deep into the cartoon that we see that's actually put to screen um which i actually really like that part i thought that was a pretty neat part i thought it was one of the better parts because i really like the style of it i did too i really like the style of it we'll get back to that we'll, we'll finish get, we'll get back to that yeah we'll, we'll finish up with with dr christie and uh, dr stearns and so now with dr stearns he hears about the news of his friend Dale Dale dying and you know committing suicide and it has now sent him on this this track of trying to figure out what is going on what did like this doesn't make sense I just talked to this man he didn't seem like he was you know even remotely thinking that he sees that so we see that Charlotte or Lily who is playing Charlotte, uh, she gets all dolled up and is about to have an interview for the first time about her dad, which also, no, nobody's worried about where Lily's living. Like, who's she living with now? Right, we she doesn't have another guardian. They don't seem to care about that. And she spends way too much looking perfect. Like, they're they're literally downstairs in the living room waiting for her and she is it, it seems like you know she's like doing the hairspray and like tussling the hair and some more hairspray and like she has the whole book the hair, how to do the lips like all of it comes down um like beautiful blue dress not black not mourning not she doesn't white. look sad she no. comes down with a smile on her face i'm ready to go right. i'm ready for the interview she, yeah and she goes on the interview dr stearns sees you know you know first we see dr stearns he makes a call to one of his friends after this team has like set up this whole thing he gets this you know kind of weird answer he kind of was like okay i buy it then he starts seeing more things where everything you know is saying not on message but a script like this they're saying the exact same thing making him right. totally worry you know think about it trying to figure it out we see that dr stern's wife is calling him kind of crazy again thinking that he is a little bit you know anxiety going back to uh checking into a mental hospital he talks about which we will get to and and dr stern's well We'll come back to this. Wait, uh, so, well, so Dr. Stearns, he sees the one thing, thank goodness Dale did it. Dale knew in his mind, he said, if I put this here, Dr. Stearns is going to see this sticker and figure this out, thankfully. I got to put that sticker on the wall. The rabbit sticker, which, this brings me a very interesting thing i noticed did you notice how many rabbits were in this episode how many rabbits were in the episode well i don't know exact numbers but <laughs> lily's so when dr stearns gets to lily's house in the beginning lily's wearing rabbit slippers this is this is the worst prize ever guess how many rabbits and you are in the jar and you get the jar of rabbits okay i guess 10 rabbits 
Uh, yeah. Do I win? Well, we don't actually know how many rabbits are in the jar, yeah. so nobody wins. But. There were a lot of rabbits. There were a lot of rabbit yeah. symbolism. Uh, Lily had rabbit slippers when Dr. Stearns got there. Lily, oh, yeah. She also, when she was laying in her bed at one point, she had a, a rabbit stuffed animal on her bed right up here. Also, a little jump to the cartoon real quick, all of Jessica Hyde's room was rabbit wallpaper. And then, of course, the rabbit sticker. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there were there were a lot of rabbit symbolism in this, this episode. Which I think is really smart for a secret organization whose uh, head of it is, you know, Mr. Rabbit, the this, this secret guy who's trying to hide his identity for him to be like, let's brand as much rabbit stuff as possible. And like, I want slippers, I want people to love rabbits and I want people to show off their rabbit stuff to everybody um, because I'm trying to hide who I am and I'm Mr. Rabbit. Don't tell anyone. That's a, that's a secret. Fortunately, what though, Mrs. Rabbit, who knows? Mil I think that that's still on the table. It is still on the table, I would say. We we don't know. Uh, we haven't, you know, in the U.S. version, we've only had one drop of Milner, and it was for a very short period of time. U.K. version, we have a little bit more Milner in that, so could be possible, and maybe we might see that in the next episode in the U.S. version. We will see. Dr. Christie, or sorry, Dr. Stearns, then notices the rabbit and he figures out how they're transferring the Dr. Stearns flu. And it's through the petting zoos. The petting zoos are doing it. He saw that rabbit logo. He he sees this rabbit sticker. Well, so he first sees when he sees Lily interviewing, he sees that the house is full now. It's lived in, it wasn't lived in before, there were no decorations, nothing on the wall. And within this one time, he decorated the house and then offed himself. And he notices the sticker, and the sticker is what sends him down the rabbit hole to figure out yeah, that the yeah. rabbits, that the petting zoo is what's giving it to these kids. And then we see the end of the episode, which we will come back and we'll talk about Jessica Hyde and that whole group, but at the end of the episode, we see his wife bash him over the head. She's she's part of it. She's in Harvest. She's a plant. She's a plant. Everyone's a plant. Everyone it's, is. It's like another thing with like the payroll. Yeah. There, there, there are people who have to like have, have these whole Crazy, lives whole life i mean kind of like dale where it's like he had this who knows what he was doing before that but yeah very um, truman show very very truman show that hey but that at least was a closed environment and you can see how they're making money off of that environment right and so it makes sense you know right. versus this like it's it's in the real world and they well, well, we'll get we'll, we'll get back to why th this one might actually make sense to to put this plant there um, for Doctor Stearns. Yep. Okay, so we'll come back to that. Let's let's jump over. Let's talk about the game. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Let's or jump now. over there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the game. What state do we see them when the episode starts? First thing we see when the episode starts, Jessica Hyde brings. Alice and Grant back from where Alice's mom was just killed along with all those other people. We see a shred of humanity from Jessica Hyde. Hey, be nice to her. Her mother just died, which doesn't quite last that long. We see right. then Jessica Hyde then grab her by the ponytail and the whole whole mess of things um but before that that's, that's, that's a slightly later scene so that, that is slightly they're, later they are, they're in the mansion right now and and alice is losing it later when they have to move to another house which is a 
dilapidated piece of crap um and alice is still losing it that's when she is like i I can't i can't deal with this kid anymore so so we see them we they come home alice uh jessica hyde just instantly gets grant and alice this alcohol to take these shots and it was which also is another surprising bit of humanity in and this is another homage to the uk one she gets him drunk right grant drunk right and so this is her giving and it yeah so we we see another shred of humanity and we have a pretty funny line in right when uh you know they they spread out utopia they're all looking at utopia trying to figure it out it's oh you know wilson wilson says it's a puzzle we just gotta figure this puzzle out and jessica hyde actually says a really funny line i don't like puzzles i am one (laughs) Uh, why are you a puzzle i mean you're not really a puzzle you're kind of a person there's no mystery behind you exactly you're just i i thought it was a very weird line uh and actually we see this as they're looking at utopia trying to figure out this puzzle in my opinion beautiful animation scene sequence um kind of sh- oh yeah kind of and this is kind of where i was talking about the rabbits on jessica hyde's wallpaper we see this beautiful scene where where she was gassed it's it's basically showing pieces of utopia to the audience saying like and kind of giving us a little bit of history about her one of the pictures we see is actually jessica hyde doing a puzzle with the good fairy we see and we you know we talk about the good fairy i still don't know think we know who the good fairy is i did make a note though that i think that the good fairy looks the way that they drew the good fairy looks like the jessica hyde uk version interesting she had kind of like the bangs the lighter skin the darkish kind of like shorter hair and so when i first saw her in that animation i thought to myself that that kind of looks like the uk jessica hyde yeah and it was so this was a an, an interesting scene because it as you said it was it was interesting animation and it was a a good way to give additional backstory without um you know it's it's over this kind of like narrative backdrop where where we do get kind of a a decent amount of information um i don't think we've seen anything like this in the the uk i have a feeling we won't we'll see um because they really haven't spent a ton of time on the actual comic in the, the the uk one so We'll see about that, but it, it definitely was kind of a, an interesting scene. And we even heard different voices for the different characters. And I wondered if, like, we, we did hear somebody speak for the good fairy. And I didn't instantly recognize the voice. I did kind of consider, like, what if they're letting us know who this is by using that actor's voice? But yes. it didn't nothing quite clicked for me on that one interesting thing to me um in that sequence when we kind of heard those voices we heard we need the monster or the monster's gonna help us or something along those lines and blue fairy says to jessica hyde she says quote find home with the monster so is that saying like you will find home with the help of the monster or are you going to find home that has the monster there are and because the impression i got is like you need the monster's help to find home but that's obviously not explicit so who knows exactly what that means so that's how i took it that's how i took it too and kind of so to me when we're like seeing that animation i feel like we are seeing the the gang 
kind of like going through the pieces, trying to figure things out. And to me, when they said the monster thing, it made me think that they're they're thinking that they're going to find this help with the monster. And I, you know, if Jessica Hyde's dad drew all this, my question is, like, how did he know that, like, because I'm assuming they're talking about Arby. Because we saw that Arby is represented as a monster in the comic. Right. We see and that they said, we created a monster. We created a monster. How would he know that Arby would help Jessica Hyde? Maybe we'll get some information about that later. Of why or how Jessica Hyde's dad would know that Arby the monster, if Arby is the monster that, that he is referring to, is going to help her. Like, what would make Jessica Hyde's dad know that? You know? And I feel like there were a couple other things that made me you know kind of what the gang speculates about what they figure out you know what wilson wilson figures out you know with the the picture of the llama with the rabbit in the straight jacket which so like the the llama itself is supposed to represent the peruvian flag and this flu came for from peru and that's yep. why he thinks that Mr. Rabbit is Dr. Stearns, who's been talking about this flu nonstop. We see that they f they relook at the photo of, of Jessica Hyde's dad, and we see, which your theory was correct, Ta -da! Dr. Stearns was, in fact, in the mental institution with Jessica Hyde's dad. I am infallible. This has nothing to do with the fact that i said about a hundred theories and only one of them so far has been true well that's the and way I, you do it you'd say out a hundred so one of them's right you know no no no. they're all right and and any of them that seem like they're not right it's going to be because the show got canceled before they could do season two but 100 percent right even if i had even if two of the theories that I said seemed like they were contradicting each other, they they both were going to be true and they were going to be explained at different times. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that so that everybody can... It's going back and watching previous episodes of, of our podcast and is like, you know, Sterling talked about this. I haven't seen it yet. Still was true. Still was true. Still was true. I am torn between the theory of Milner being Mr. Rabbit and Ms. just Ms. Rabbit. Ms. Rabbit. And Jessica Hyde's dad being Mr. Rabbit. And the reason I think that either Because I don't think it's Michael Stearns that is I could see Michael Stearns and this was another theory I think you had where Michael Stearns is Jessica Hyde's dad. Right. So I do kind of think that like she's maybe misremembering because we see in the picture, Mr. Rabbit's in a straitjacket. He's in a straitjacket. Why is Mr. Rabbit in a straitjacket? You know, and I think they kind of were saying that Mr. Rabbit was riding the llama, which is the Dr. Stern's character. Uh, you know, it was his, I think, hubris or something that it's going, you know, he's gonna, you know, take it out. But a part of me is wondering if mr rabbit was just is jessica hyde's dad as well and it's that guy we've kind of seen you know we've seen like vague sides of him you know the photo from a distance but we see him in a straitjacket implying that he was in the mentalist institution you know you wouldn't see mr rabbit in a straitjacket unless he was in a mental institution yeah unless Jessica Hyde's dad drew it because he was hoping, you know, because he was in a mental institution, he's hoping that he could, you know, get revenge on Mr. Rabbit. But then the llama and the Peru thing doesn't really line up. So I would assume that, you know, because she, you know, she talks about, and this Jessica Hyde, the U U.S. version, talks about she was brought cookies by Mr. Rabbit. 
Yep. And, you know, I'm thinking maybe Dr. Stearns brought her the cookies and that Mr. Rabbit was actually her dad that was, you know, all these different things. You know, we, we, I don't know if we can fully trust Dr. Stern's memories. You know, we, we know he knows he went to a mental institution, but he was so close to Jessica Hyde's dad, so close to let, if Mr. Rabbit is John Cusack, and he, I would assume, would have come to visit Jessica Hyde's dad, wouldn't Michael Stern's be like, hey, remember that time I was in the facility and Dr. Christie came and visited me? We might even find that... I just have a new theory. Okay. Lay it on me. Jessica Hyde's dad is John Cusack and Mr. Rabbit and he faked his death in the mental institution and he has that you know that like facial hair glasses and the like crazy hair shaved it cleaned it all up now he looks like john cusack interesting i don't know why i didn't uh zoom in on that shot and 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 pause but it might be time to use that rewind button and and the pause button it's rewind time and then talk to my computer zoom and enhance enhance still a little pixelated but so that is now i'm wondering that so i i will say that this is it's really got us thinking who is this mr rabbit and i the gang even thinks you know they think it's dr stearns right um i would say wilson wilson is pretty convinced it's dr stearns he you know he's talking about the virus he figures out the llama and the peru flag you know carrying you know mr rabbit i could but i don't think he is mr rabbit because he i don't think he's mr rabbit i I think that i think it was a case of wilson wilson put the majority of the puzzle together but put a very important piece in a very wrong spot you know so it's like he figured out the the Peruvian flu, you know, with the the red and white as the flag, and Peru has llamas, and um, the Peruvian flu that was in there was spread by bats, and this red and white llama has bat wings, so it's the Peruvian virus. And so I think he, he put most of the pieces together correctly, and then took that a step too far and then said, you know, ipso facto, the guy that discovered it that is offering the cure to everybody is the bad guy, which makes sense because it it certainly does seem like he's the one, but really it's like behind the scenes, it's Dr. Christie that put him as the face of the cure so that Dr. Christie could not have to take the spotlight on that. Yeah, I, I I could definitely agree with that. And so Wilson Wilson figures this all out and he barges in on Becky and Ian who, okay, I feel like they were trying to do a little... Another homage? Homage, you know, they were, yeah. they were trying to be like, oh, look, they went off on their little date thing and, you know, Becky and Ian in the UK version have slept together a couple times and... Now we see they they do it, and it's... But that first time in both, they are ripping clothes off to the point where it's kind of awkward. It's that, like, we just have to get to the sex part as quickly as possible. It, right. It's not like that romantic buildup of, you know, kissing, and it's just, like, straight to the, the clothes ripping off part in a slightly awkward way of, like, you're trying to take something off, but it's not working quite right. And that, that to me... Even though in the end it was different because Ian finished this time versus he couldn't perform in the in the, the UK one, it's still like that clothes ripping off scene seemed like another homage. Like right, they love the 
they love the original and they try to do homages, but then also try and do their own thing. And so it's like we want to show that we love it, but we also right. don't just want to do a shot for shot. And Becky says one of the greatest, not the greatest. It's it's another funny line. This this episode had a ton of funny lines in it. Becky says, uh, you know, they're about to get frisky, and Ian's like, oh, what about what about your deals? Like, what about deals? And she's like, having sex is the biggest f you to deals. Why is that the biggest F you to do? Like, what? How, how is... I would like to know how sleeping with somebody is the biggest F you to a disease. Yeah. And does does that answer the, the questionable... The question of, is this transmissible? And should I be doing this because I don't also want deals? Right, right. Like, do, do we know enough about deals? Is it can it can it be sexually transmitted? We don't know. Um, How many people that have a virus that is literally killing them tattoo themselves with the protein from that virus? Yeah, that's is, is that a is that a common thing? You know, I I hear, you know, when the AIDS epidemic was huge, they all, like, had the little virus tattooed behind their ear. Yeah. You know, it was a, a sign of solidarity of... <laughs> very interesting to have the tattoo behind your ear of, of deals. Yeah. Don't don't understand it. Doesn't make sense. You know, they see it in, in Utopia at one point. I don't know why it's still popping up in Utopia. Like, it seems like utopia is kind of focused on like one thing about how they talk about utopia in the beginning you know when you see wilson wilson like talking about the the shape of guatemala and the the one virus and the first one is all these different viruses but then like this one seems like it's just a puzzle like there's a couple things like the they talk about the t-rash virus but there's like it's mostly to try to he's trying to get jessica hyde to figure out where mr rabbit is essentially and they notice there's deals in it so there's like he's like oh there's a picture of deals in it like why why is deals in this one and then even ian makes a great comment it's like oh i didn't know it was so pretty Right. That's why you got it tattooed. It's so pretty. I think it still has a part to play in this. I don't Deals. know if, if Harvest, yes. Maybe Harvest has the cure. I don't know what, but they're, they didn't just give her uh, a debilitating disease, which was mentioned in the previous comic before it came out. Without, I, I feel like it's it's still being brought up so that there can be a payoff, and I I do feel like that's one of the things that has improved about the show is that they have done a lot of prior setup, and so we are finally getting a good amount of payoff. And so even though I'm still not in love with the pacing of this show, I do feel like it's coming together. Yes. You know, a lot of the, the threads are being tied up. And I think that if we were at this point without watching the UK one, I, I definitely, I know I wouldn't be in love with the show, but I think I would, I would definitely be happier with the show now than if I were watching the UK. And I'm, I'm enjoying the show at this point. Yes, I, I would agree. It's just unfortunate with the comparisons where I think if, if this was the only Jessica Hyde I know, knew, I'd possibly be okay with that. And finally seeing her start to gain some humanity, you know, that would be fine. But when you compare her against the UK Jessica Hyde, it's it just makes you wonder, like, why did you make that choice of making her seem crazy and unrelatable? You know? Yeah. Um... But it's... So standalone. If we were to watch it without UK... I still wouldn't recommend it at the, 
crazy strongly. I wouldn't say like this is the next show you have to watch. Right. But it's if if you've if you've burned out all of your other shows at this point, you're looking for something to watch. You know, I I think I might say this is an interesting show. If you like sci-fi, you know, you enjoy kind of a, a, a mystery, you like comics, I maybe not sci-fi, but you know, um it's it's interesting enough. You know? Yeah. Get, get through like episode four and it'll pick up. That yeah. I I will agree with you. I do think also be ready that it's good be ready that it's gonna end. So don't get <laughs> don't get too attached. You get four episodes that might be good and then yeah. it's it's over. I wasn't too much a, a fan of the the deal scene where Becky starts suffering a deal's episode. You know, we had seen her kind of experience these episodes before. You know, the first time we see it, it's in the very first episode and she ties herself to a chair. You know, some to me if it's causes someone to not breathe tying to a chair doesn't really make sense we see her going into the in the bathtub the one scene and she has her episode never once do they refer to her not breathing and then in this one she has her episode she stops breathing and it's not like she stops breathing because there's something clogged here she stopped breathing because I'm assuming the function stopped. So stabbing the trachea doesn't make sense in that scenario. Yeah. So Jessica Hyde goes full full Halloween on her and just stabs her in the trachea and puts a a rusty funnel, a metal funnel, not even clean funnel right into her throat like was a very interesting also, I- <laughs> I, 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 we're we're way too small for um for somebody like uh, Dr. Mike Vishanti from uh, YouTube to to comment on this, but it seemed like that funnel was very large and probably too large for the trachea. I feel like all the tracheotomies I've seen have been like the a pen, um, pen. Yes, exactly. And this or, thing is oh, like that funnel was it was it was freaking big. And just got like shoved in there without like opening the yeah know, just so, like, which pop. means I feel like that would be doing a lot of tear like undoing the work of your nice neat cut right because it was so large and it's not like they pried before they put it in so they're just like shoving ripping it it seemed like it was probably too big and probably shoved in in such a way to create damage that wouldn't be fixable via scarf. Right, and so, yeah, we see her, one, they don't do anything after that, they just put it in, it didn't change anything, so it looks like she's dead, her eyes are open, she's not breathing, this, putting this into her throat literally makes no sense in this moment, it did nothing, and in fact now it just seems like we just destroyed our friend's vocal cords, and... talk which i don't think you should be able to do with the tracheotomy because <clears throat> it was a little raspy uh, yeah. but she instantly sits up pulls it out well but before that there's like it didn't they they did try and make you think she's dead oh yeah they de- they, they she just laid there eyes wide open everybody in the room kind of just acknowledge that she was dead they, like, they leaned into she is dead without making it at all emotional so i didn't really care unfortunately i didn't either um and then they just walk it back by having her come back to life and then kind of make a joke out of it where she just rips it out blood squirts nobody you know, she's, like, feeling it, but you just see blood drip, like, coming out, like, kind of a lot of blood, and it's, you know, right by your artery right here, and, like, that giant thing could have maybe hit the artery, but it's just pouring blood. Nobody rushes to, like, 
put anything on it. She's just like, what happened? I don't know what happened. She's like, I just have these terrible friends that just stab me in the throat when my deals axe up. They put just a scarf on her. Like, that's going to fix it. Like, they don't go look for any, like, clean cloth or anything. Just a random scarf. Just throw it on. It's red. Nobody else. Jessica Hyde has been wearing um, after Jessica Hyde made it clear in, I think, episode two uh, not to take showers, which means that she is a dirty person wearing dirty clothes yeah and and with a dirty scarf and even the the joke of you know wilson and and ian kind of acknowledge it they're like well our friend just survived like and jessica hyde trying to show a little humanity but also kind of making a joke out of it walks up to her and says good job pats her on the back good job right I I think that that is a little bit of an issue I do see with the US version is that they do they have these very serious moments Wilson's eye yeah. Becky deals and kind of something like what Marvel does is they always undercut the serious ones with a joke it's like too serious we want this to be lighthearted so even though we just stabbed her in the trachea we thought she was dead. She didn't. We had blood squirting out. Good job. Good job. Yeah, and the the subject matter of this seems too dark for that. And it's not that not to say that you can't work good comedy in there to give us a break, but I don't think that but I don't think the comedy should undercut the seriousness of a moment. Right. But instead be one of those things that helps create that kind of roller coaster of tension that allows us in a non-serious moment to have a moment where we can actually relax, unclench everything so our, our muscles can kind of like get some, some blood back into them. Because if it's a, a good tense thing, you know, you are like at the edge of your seat, you are clenched, you are extremely worried about what's gonna happen. And by giving you that release, it allows when you build that tension for you to feel it again. And then when you have that really high moment in the tension for it to hit versus if it's just kind of like always tense. Um, uh, a, a weird kind of example of, of that's the exact opposite of what I'm explaining is, is important. And yet it's still works so well for me is um christopher nolan's uh what's the 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 um one based off of a true story um uh about the the british troops that are surrounded by the the french dunkirk um, oh no dunkirk yes yeah yeah okay that's and and yet it's it's a to some extent it's kind of a perfect example of the 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 tension is is so high in that film the entire time that there are extremely emotional things that happen and you don't get a chance to process it and yet it's a great film because I feel like at the end it finally releases all that emotion and you finally get that moment and it just like hits you like a tsunami that it's, it's yeah. just been building this whole time and you haven't been able to release it most films TV shows can't do something like that they have to have like they have to let the waves break you know so it's right. like you you have that tension hit you have a lull maybe that's when you kind of like have a, a joke or something you don't do it all the time but you do kind of have these like waves so that people can get ready for the next one because most most films tvs can't just like keep that going right and so i do feel like this is more like it's trying to do a marvel thing though and it's it's undercutting as, as you said it's it, there are important moments and they just get undercut or even yeah. when they're not important moments they the the jokes don't always don't always hit for me because they because they they do they they undercut the seriousness of other moments even if that moment isn't serious you know like the when when they're going to see Milner and Wilson Wilson gets out of the car 
because he's trying to cut down to one torture a month. Right. Even though that moment isn't a serious moment. And so it is it is a good moment for a joke. Right. He would not be making that joke about himself. Right. That's a very sensitive subject. You know, so they could have had a joke at that time. That would have been a good spot for it. That wasn't the joke. Right. That 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 joke did not hit. You know, I didn't necessarily like so like going back to Becky and Ian you know they kind of make the joke where they're you know they've had this sexual tension this whole time and they start to do and uh, it's all over Whoa, oh, ah. and, yeah and so I feel like that you know was a, a better time for a joke you know it was like it wasn't a super serious moment I mean it was a little serious you know it was like their first kindling of, you know, finally having a, a physical, you know, interaction. and But I thought that was a, a more tasteful joke other than, the, you know, the Wilson Wilson jokes. And then, you know, our friend Becky just was almost dead. And then, good job. Like, eh, right. just those, those jokes maybe didn't land as, as hard for me. Yeah. I, I definitely feel the same. So, I would say you were going to talk about this, you know, we find out that, you know, well, sorry. Jessica Hyde is a little confusing. We see her nice to Alice. And then we see her, you know, Alice kind of doesn't want to be there anymore. You know, like, we didn't see like in the UK version where they were having di- discussions of like what to do with Alice, they kind of just accepted Alice like, Oh, Alice is part of this now. Like she's coming along and it doesn't really seem like anybody in that group other than Grant even acknowledges Alice really like Wilson Wilson doesn't Becky and Ian don't Jessica High does a little bit. And then I just, I felt like that, this scene was kind of weird where you know Alice is freaking out and Jessica Hyde is you know gonna kill her and they were like no you can't kill her and you know she pulls her by the hair and eventually just you know drags her upstairs and like slaps her and like I feel like Jessica Hyde wouldn't have tolerated that you know like getting slapped um you know she handcuffs her and we have this kind of moment where like alice is like go get me scissors and like grant goes gets her scissors he's like she's like cut it cut my brain she's like that bitch is never gonna get my braid again like alice is now a badass standing up to jessica hyde after just i just i don't know that was i i don't know if it's characters aren't well written and the the I, I think that writing is the, the number one enemy yes. in this show. Yes. And and I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that they bring this child home traumatized from seeing, you know, their parents' death and nobody else talks to, you know, n- nobody, at, at they, least in the other one, they, they and the, the other one keeps stuff short and cuts out a lot and they show that there are discussions about what do we do with this human versus this one they just they accept her into the house but also they don't don't talk to her, her you know just lock her up just go uh put a handcuff on her and that's the end of it i just yeah it it was a strange scene for me like the other uk alice you know she's breaking down she's losing it and this Alice, like, she was upset. I want to go home, you know, kind of like, I want my mom, you know. But then after she got locked up, then she's just, she'll never get my braid again. Like, so, like, vindictive, like, she pulled my hair. She'll she'll rue the day that she pulled my hair. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Like, you know, we saw in the UK version, Alice ends up, murdering a guy 
just out of nowhere, and I don't know if I see this Alice doing something like that. In, no. And it, it, it's interesting, like, they they both tried to portray the same thing in different ways in the beginning with, with Alice, where, um, when, when she's kind of losing it. In the UK one, she's she's losing it, and she has this uber focus on, I have an assignment coming up that I have to turn in, and I don't have paper, I don't have pen, and then she, she doesn't have the book, and she doesn't remember details. Uh, luckily, Grant has paper and pen, and she remembers enough details from the book that she doesn't need the book. But it's 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 very silly to focus on this because, kids, you're never going to school again. Yeah, right. But but you you get it, you know. Right. And and Grant is is very nice about you know helping her out with it. I think like this one, you see a similar type thing of she says that she wants to go back to her mom she knows her mom is dead that's not right on the table and so it it's the same thing it doesn't it doesn't quite have the same effect um and and that i i feel like in the the uk one where you really see her go down this rabbit hole of, of focusing on this assignment where it it's a rabbit hole yeah <laughs> Um, it you you can really kind of see her unraveling, and so it makes sense when, you know, when we see her kill the other person of just like. She's, her reality's gone, at that yeah. point. Nothing makes sense to her. Where this right. one, yeah, and you know, I do feel like we saw kind of Grant trying to like. Be that. You know, like that olive branch to her like in the uk one he's you know he like gives into her things like i'll get you paper i'll get you a pen i'll get your paper in for you like just don't worry about it and then we see in this one you know she's chained to the the bed and he goes down he brings utopia for her and he has that there's that little note in it and he said i'll i'll be back for this you know, or whatever, and he had the little piece that he had ripped off and said, P.S., you're cool. You know, I don't know if we've really seen her be cool, because, like, remember the very first time we meet her, he wants to eat some blackberries. She says, those are my blackberries, and, like, doesn't really share. And then, you know, when he gets the sack lunch, we don't know if, if she gave him the blackberries or if the mom just gave him the blackberries. Like, it doesn't explicitly implied that alice gave it to him i i don't think we saw alice be cool in this one i think we saw alice's mom be cool yeah alice's mom is cool i I think that's what won grant over so i i don't understand why grant has this affection and appreciation for alice i mean i can understand why somebody might want to protect somebody that wounded Right. But at the same time, I, I still wouldn't see a direct type. Like, there's nothing that she has done that for me says you're, you know, based off what he's seen, you're a cool kid. Right. Now, to circle back, we talked about how the episode ended already. We see that Dr. Stern's wife is a murderer, ends up. Or not murderer, but a plant. Not a murderer. Yep. She's a plant. She knocks him over the head. And she... She's a plant. You at Harvard. Trimmer. A plant at a harvest? <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and, and, and now we kind of also understand maybe that, you know, like... We saw her kind of, like, gaslight him in a way. You know? She was very much, like you're kind of crazy you're you know we you've been so sure before and so did she gaslight him the first time to get him into the mental hospital you know where he was sure about something and that she gaslit him all the way there you know like right what does this mean and i feel like you had something to say about this no i really don't remember any of that i i do remember that she is very dedicated to this cause to the point like She's willing to do 
any silly thing to distract him, whether it's like do the whole burrito tucking in. I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you so funny. Which he was with her the whole time, and so she was the one. Laptop. Yeah, she. You know what? He is. He's. He's well hung. He put that in his pants. She didn't even notice the bulge, right? Just so everybody else knows what we're talking about. She she's like, you gotta you're 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 getting a little crazy. I know I'm not supposed to say the C word, but you're getting a little crazy. Uh kind of like when you were in the asylum. You need some rest, you've only had two hours of rest, you know, you you gotta stop focusing on this. Let me take you to she shuts the computer. No. No more. In that that bedtime. Time, time to go to bed for you to get some sleep. We see them upstairs and now she's doing a little burrito thing, you know, tucking him in nice and tight, making tucking a nice him in tight sleep. little burrito, right? Shutting the and blinds. Then, right? And then when she leaves, he pulls out his laptop. <laughs> and who, uh, who knows? Maybe he has a spare laptop in his bed. You know, like, he's a nerd, right? We all, we all have a spare laptop. But is it have. ever charged? Is it ever charged? It wasn't plugged in. He just pulls it out and it's fully charged and he can look up what he needs to look up. Seems a little suspicious. Yeah. Little sus. Cool sus. Well, folks, I think that's going to do it for us in this uh, review of episode six of US. We will be back next week. We will be with the two episodes. It will be episode seven of the US version episode five of the uk version thank you guys for coming and we had a great time with you don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and turn on that bell for notifications i'm mark i'm sterling and we're signing off